Welcome to St. Hugh's on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. I'm glad that you're joining us. If you come carrying a lot of baggage, set it down, burdened, tossed the burdens aside, worried, let go of those worries and come and center, taking a deep breath, resting in God, resting in God's word, and offering prayers for others on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us prepare our hearts to hear the word of God and to offer our prayers for others. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, from you no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, our hymn of praise is titled, This Joyful Easter Tide, sung by the Quarantine Choir of Leicester, England, and the videography by Douglas Burton. Please lift your hearts to God in praise. This joyful Easter tide, away with sin and sorrow, my love, the crucified, has grown to life is Slain, let us tease three day prison. Our faith hath been in vain, but now hath Christ arisen, 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 arisen. My flesh in hope shall rest. And for a season slumber, till drunk from east to west shall wake the dead in number. Had Christ that once was slain, never since three days. Let us pray. O oh God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Once again, I invite you to humble and quiet yourself that you might hear the word of God, that you might hear what the Spirit is saying to you.
In our first reading, Peter and John, having cured a crippled man, are called to account before the High Jewish Council. Peter testifies that the source of healing power is the same Jesus whom the leaders rejected. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. In our psalm response, the Lord is shepherd and guide. God is present in the time of danger and is generous and merciful. A reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In our epistle reading, we learn that the followers of Jesus are to emulate his love by laying down their lives for one another. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
In our Gospel reading, we are taught that Jesus is the Good Shepherd who is willing to die for his sheep. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Now I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they, they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit to open God's word even further. I'm continuing what I began on Easter. Who introduced the risen Lord to you? Or how was the risen Lord introduced to you? 
What have you done to nurture that knowledge? What have you done to treasure that experience of the risen Lord? Have you, in your turn, been a witness to someone else? Have you shared the good news of your experience of the risen Lord? And then ultimately, what difference does it make? What difference does it make in your life, in the life of your family, in the life of the community? What difference does it make to know, believe, trust your experience of the risen Lord? On this Sunday, where we hear Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. I want to share my experience of the good shepherd. I'm really the risen Lord as the good shepherd, not bound by time, not bound by space. The risen Lord who, in the weeks we've been listening to the scriptures, appeared to Mary in her grief and sorrow and despair and confusion, appeared to the disciples locked away because they were so afraid, appeared to Thomas to say, put your fingers here and your hand in my side. Don't doubt, but believe. So the risen Lord appearing even to those who doubt, who wonder, who question. And as he introduces himself today, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the flock, for the sheep. And in the end of that gospel passage, we heard him say, I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up again, not bound by time or space. My experience of the risen Lord as the good shepherd came in the midst of a serious illness. And the experience I share with you came on a night when I was really, really tired. I was the most tired I had been in this entire illness. Later, I was told that perhaps this was one of those times that my family was called to the hospital in the night. He's not going to make it, so you'd better come now. I found that out later. In the moment, what I remember, I was tired. I felt alone. But then there was this sudden experience of peace and of a presence in the midst of that tiredness. And I remember my dialogue. My part was this. I somehow sensed that this was God present with me in this um, moment. And so I said, so is this how I die? Is this the night that I die? And it seemed like there was a, a long space of time. And finally, the answer came that no, Daniel, this isn't your time. Just go to sleep. And there was a complete trust. And I slept that night and I woke the next day. Looking back on that experience, I either remembered things or added things. I'm not sure which. But what I am certain of, I am so certain in the depths of my heart. The place where this encounter took as I closed my eyes and imagined again uh, that whole sequence, it was a, a barren, dusty place. And though I knew I was in the hospital and I knew it was night and I knew I was tired, I was in this vast space that was barren. Maybe a road, I'm not sure. And it was daylight. And again, it was barren, but it wasn't hot. Nor was I distressed. That peace that I just described was a peace I felt. And in this place, again, as I replayed that, listened to it in my heart, let the spirit guide me, there was this presence, this being, that I was in dialogue with. And the overwhelming sense in that moment, in that presence, was of a profound peace. Later, 
I would say I had encountered on that road, in that barren place, in that wilderness, I had encountered the risen Lord, the good shepherd. And as that continues, that experience continues to inform my prayers and my meditations, my reading of the scriptures, it makes a huge difference. Now, my experience isn't of the biblical proportion of Paul being blinded and given a direction, but it's every bit as powerful as that experience that Saul had on the road to Damascus. It is an unshakable conviction that in that moment, I met the risen Lord, I met the good shepherd, I was home, I was at peace. And in my life, whether it's up or whether it's down, that knowledge, that experience, informs the joy in my heart and the peace in my heart. So I share that with you, ask you to go back in your own life. Who or how did the risen Lord become known to you? How was that done? What have you done to nurture that knowledge? Have you witnessed to others? And my prayer is that it makes a huge difference in your life as it does in mine. Amen. The truths of our faith have been expressed over the centuries in the Nicene Creed. It is the core of our belief about Jesus. He had flesh by the Virgin Mary and the power of the Holy Spirit. He lived. He died on the cross. He was buried, shut in a tomb with a stone rolled in front of it. And three days later, he rose again. And that is the promise to all who have come to believe in him, that we too shall defeat death even as our brother Jesus did. Please join in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now from the readings, we turn to prayers, prayers for others. Please join Diana in these prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, Daniel, our priest, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for our president and for all who govern and hold authority in this and every nation of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. 
Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. I invite you to call to mind and heart those who have died. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. I invite you to call to mind and heart those persons or situations requesting or needing our prayers. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We collect these prayers now, praying, O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. One of the most marvelous things about the Good Shepherd is even when we run away, he comes and looks for us. Even when we stray, we are still beloved, and our Lord, the Good Shepherd, is still willing to lay down his life for us. So I invite you now to confess that indeed we have strayed, we have sinned, and we really do depend on the grace of Jesus Christ for forgiveness and life. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And hear now the words of absolution and forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in that prayer that Jesus has entrusted to you and to me, his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us humble ourselves and receive God's blessing. The love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Good Shepherd, the Shepherd who lays down his life for you and me, the love of Jesus Christ draw you close, hold you close, and comfort you. The power of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power to love God and neighbor in ways that are amazing and healing, that power empower your own ministry. The joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, a joy even in the midst of tiredness and the thought of death and the end of things, that joy, that profound joy, be your joy of new life of new beginnings, of endless possibilities. That joy be yours. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our concluding hymn this morning, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, is intended to remind you of the gospel story, Jesus the Good Shepherd, remind you of the collect where we acknowledge that Jesus the Good Shepherd knows us and calls us each by name. Please join in singing wherever you are, the King of Love, my Shepherd is.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world in the name of Christ, in the name of the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.